Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on the Magnum. What I'm doing is working on the wiring harness for the rear hatch. So when I went to the dealership, I had to crawl through the car to open the hatch to get the wheel out of it. I don't wanna to have to do that anymore. So this is something I have been wanting to do and I've just kind of been putting it off. So I'm gonna do that today. Also, some people were commenting about the rattling noise they heard. This speaker bracket, I just had it hand tight. So it was rattling around. Also, I put the sound deadening stuff around the wheel wells. So that should cut down on some road noise. What I'm gonna do is tuck, pretty much wrap all these wires up, get them to the hatch, extend which wires I need to extend, throw the speaker in over here and just kind of wire it. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit of a process, but I think I should be able to handle it. I also wanna test, I kind of modified the latch. So hopefully the latch and the original button handle works and we can get everything 100% working on this so I don't have to crawl through the car to open the hatch anymore. Also on the trim around here, it's all gray over there. I'm not exactly sure what I wanna do with it. I'm gonna wrap the headliner in the back piece back here in Alcantara as well as the side posts. But on that stuff, I may end up painting it. I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm uh, gonna kind of have to make a decision. The Alcantara should be here in uh, like a week. I ordered it yesterday, so it should be here in a week. And then we can get everything wrapped, get the headliner back in, etc. So let's get to work, get all this busted out and hopefully have a working opening hatch by the end of this video. I just went and grabbed a few more boxes of heat shrink. So I have the new defrost module from the Challenger connected to the Magnum. So I need to extend this wire so it could be bolted here. And then I'll connect this to the original Magnum wiring for the hatch. I decided to just modify the original Magnum hatch wiring harness. So all I really have done so far is take out the rear windshield wiper motor. I also ended up using the Magnum hatch plugs and the length of wiring harness. So what I'm gonna do is connect to these wires, the corresponding wires and the Challenger harness, and I think it'll work out very well. I really needed a winch to actually pull the G35 up onto my trailer. So I'm gonna get a cheap Chinese one. They're like 312 bucks, which isn't bad. They're 9,000 pounds. So whatever I'm actually pulling onto the trailer is gonna be way under that. So now I'm gonna bolt the winch onto the trailer. And I think that getting this winch was probably the best thing I could have done for this trailer. This trailer is pretty tall and it's pretty long. And as you guys already know, most of the time I'm by myself. So pushing a car onto this trailer is impossible by myself. So having a winch added to the trailer is gonna make this trailer so much more usable. And I think I'll just really wanna use it instead of calling AAA all the time because I'll have a winch to pull the cars on and off. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bolt the winch on. I already think the holes on this plate are the correct pattern. We'll see, I guess. And then later on, I wanna add a battery, wire the battery in so it charges, and then maybe have the battery secured so it's actually locked in. So somebody just can't come up, walk away with the battery. And I may do something similar with the winch. Uh, I may end up getting some tamper-proof Torx uh, to secure the winch down to the, the plate right here, this plate base, just so somebody can't come up with like a crescent wrench and remove the winch because winches do get stolen a lot. And I think the Chinese winch, I think it's fine for this application. I'm not gonna use it too much. I got a 9,000 pound one, which is probably double anything I'm actually gonna carry on this trailer, unless I carry like a, a diesel truck or something. I'll probably do that every once in a while, but I mean, the winch, everything comes from China, so I think it'll be okay. So let's get this winch mounted and then kind of go from there because I wanna take the Magnum over to the shop and uh, get the G35 to the scrapyard, and maybe th that scrap 3000 GT to the scrapyard as well. Just kind of clean some stuff up and uh, just kind of get a little bit less junk around. And uh, we have, we may be getting two more cars this week. So I kind of want to get rid of two cars and I think the, uh, the two cars that I'm gonna get, people are gonna be kinda excited. So let's uh, get this winch bolted on.
All right, so we have the winch on the trailer now. Everything's good to go. So now the trailer has a winch. Like I said before, I'm just gonna pretty much connect a battery with jumper cables for now. And uh, once I do mount a battery, I'll run all the wiring. There'll just be a power and a ground that goes over there. But for now, this is okay. And uh, what I'm gonna do now, I have the truck warming up. I'm gonna connect the trailer to it. And then we'll pretty much take the Magnum I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna take this over to the junkyard or the shop yet, but I need to pull the engine and tranny. I need to pull pretty much all the drivetrain parts out of it, except I wanna keep it so it's rolling. So I'm gonna put the steelies that were on the old Magnum or the scat pack swap Magnum onto this one, sell these wheels, take the, the engine tranny out, uh, pull the exhaust, all that stuff, pretty much as much as I can pull off of this while still keeping it rolling around. And then uh, it'll be a lot easier to kind of work with. So on the way to drop the Magnum off at the junkyard so we can commence pulling all of the drivetrain, or not the drivetrain, but the engine, transmission, all the, you know, I don't know, pretty much drivetrain. So let's get over there and uh, get this thing off the trailer and we'll be able to use a new winch. Twenty-two inch wheels are now off of the Magnum and I have the old wheels off of my Magnum. Now they hold air. I could roll this thing around a lot easier. Later tonight, I'm gonna pull the engine transmission, pretty much get this thing down to bare bones and I'm gonna list these wheels for sale. I really have no use for them. The good thing is they have all the center caps, they have wheel locks and they're pretty decent. Every wheel has a different tire and two of the tires really don't like to hold air. Uh, another thing is there is some road rash. One of them has a bend in it. So whoever buys them is gonna have to pretty much refinish them anyway, but they are five by 120 and four um, by 114.3. So they're really not the right bolt pattern, I think for these, because these are five by 115. Um, they're really close, but if uh, you use five by 114.3 over time, it will end up breaking the lug studs off because it kind of chatters on there uh, over time because it's not 100% centered. You can get, well, you can't do it with these, but if you have like a Mercedes or a Volkswagen or an Audi or something like that, that has studs, you can get wobble um, bolts where it just kind of self centers, which is kind of nice. And since these ones actually center on the hub, you could actually do that. So. Hopefully I can get these sold relatively quick because I don't want them sitting around. They're pretty big, they're 22 inches and uh, just kind of go from there. One of my subscribers was saying that the knuckle in the front may be larger because these are 22s. I did look with the original knuckle, measured it, everything is the exact same. So these are the factory knuckles. It's just uh, crazy that 22s actually fit under those knuckles. So what I'm gonna do now is I need to go by Walmart to get more electrical tape for my Magnum so I can finish up the hatch wiring harness. Also, I need to go by the post office and I need to go, where else do I need to go? I need to go somewhere else, but yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna take my Magnum since I have the truck and trailer and I don't wanna be driving my truck and trailer around Walmart parking lot. I think it'll be a lot easier to just cruise the Magnum over there and uh, just kind of get everything done that I need to today and just kind of work from there. Got the electrical tape from the store. Now what I'm gonna do is finalize the wiring harness in the hatch and get all of that stuff ready to go. I'm probably going to have to extend the wires for the rear camera, the backup camera. But other than that, I think everything else will go well, especially since I used part of the Magnum rear hatch harness. Um, I'm not gonna have to extend so many wires. I could just wire it into that. And I think that will be a lot better. So let's get this all finalized, tucked up so it's not hanging down. And uh, then we can get the other Magnum in here and get the engine transmission and all the drivetrain out of that car so we can get it prepared to start undergoing the surgery for the whole body swap.
Magnum hatch is now 99% wired. I'm having this little issue with the Magnum popping button. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, uh, but even when I touch both wires together, it still doesn't release the latch. So the latch itself works. I have it so it works with the key fob. So I can open the hatch this way. I just double hit it. Well, you kind of have to, it's kind of weird. You almost have to do it at the same time. It uh, doesn't actually pop. And the issue I think with that is the struts are uh, really worn out. So if I did have it, so it actually double pushed this button and the struts were good, it would actually pop up. But what I'm gonna try now, since the Magnum button isn't working, I have the button up there on the back of the tail light, the center tail light that goes on the trunk. I'm gonna hook the wires up to that, press the button and see if maybe it works then. I'm not exactly sure why it wouldn't work. All it is doing is grounding the circuit, telling it to open the latch or telling the car to open the latch. And the key fob, the module is behind the rear bumper. So it should be seeing that the key fob is there. So we shouldn't be having any security issues or anything like that. It must just be something with the resistance and the switch. Troubleshooting the button for the hatch to open it. And I kind of was running into this issue with it really didn't matter. I tried the one on this car, I wired it in, it didn't work. I pulled the one off the other Magnum, connected it, it didn't work. So then what I did, I cut the wires, connected the original button off the Challenger, and you could definitely tell that they're different style buttons. I'm guessing this one right here has a resistor in it, and uh, it has something to do with resistance, but this one literally is just closing contacts and completing the ground to unlatch the thing. Magnum button is now apart, and you can see the two little contactors inside of it. This literally just completes the circuit, completes the ground. So obviously there must be some kind of resistor or something inside the Challenger button. The Magnum hatch is now 100% wired up. I also wired in the backup camera. So like I said before, I'm gonna use this hole back here to put the grommet for the reverse camera and then everything will be almost like factory. I put the other, the other hatch struts from the other Magnum on here, just so this hatch would hold itself up. But yeah, I had to extend this backup camera wiring about four, four and a half feet. So, you know, just note that if you guys are gonna do this conversion. And then the reason being it had to run around the hatch and then back through the top. So now all that's wired up, the rear defrost is wired, the rear antenna is wired. Uh, I need to still cut the hole to hold the antenna module up on the ceiling. So I was cutting it with my Dremel and then the Dremel disc came apart. They, they always do that. I don't know why they do it, but yeah. So I need to get another one of those discs. Then I could bolt that up there and uh, we'll be all good with all this wiring. The last little bit of wiring that's hanging down will be out of the way, but I'm really glad that all the wiring is pretty much tucked up. The only wiring that I really have left to do is the windows. So all four door harnesses and the windows, I'll do that once I get the door panels. And this is the module I'm talking about. I was cutting the hole. This little piece right here just slides up in and then there's a little bolt. I'm gonna put a rivet nut to hold that down, but that'll just sit under the headliner and there's just this connects to the, uh, the antenna on the back of the back glass. But you can see over here, I uh, wrapped all the wiring up here. Actually, you really can't see it because it's so dark, but I wrapped all the wiring up here, used clips, it's all clipped in, looks really nice, looks factory. And then I also have all the holes drilled to hold the antenna, the other antenna wiring, the little dolphin fin antenna. So that's all held up there really nice. So I've been needing to do this for quite some time. I pulled the rear seats, put the insulation slash sound editing that goes under the seats back in the car out of the Challenger. And now I'm gonna put the seats back in. The seats are now back in the Magnum and everything is now good to go. The hatch is wired. We are getting very, very close. So I did try to put the cargo cover back here, but all those wires right there are very bunched up. I do need to shorten them. I, uh, I really wanna wait but I think I may just end up shortening them just so everything fits. And I have to, if I have to extend wires, I'll just have to extend them later on. But another thing I wanna do is 
on the Challenger, it has this little box right here that these things clip into. I wanna actually graph that box into the Magnum sheathing and then have everything really nice and tidy. Another thing is this, I need to see what this actually does, but I need to figure out where I'm gonna mount it. So I might mount it down here, but I really don't want it so it's underneath the thing so I can get heavy stuff dropped on it. I may end up mounting it over here, something like that. So we'll kind of see what happens with that. But I'm really glad the hatch is all wired up, the backup camera is all wired up. All that stuff was just kind of tedious to solder all together. Not as tedious as it's gonna to be to solder all these wires, shorten them and re-solder them, but we'll, we'll figure it out a little bit later on. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pull this magnum outside, bring the other magnum in, The Magnum shell is now in the shop and it is very, very difficult to steer these cars without a steering column, especially the older version because it has this weird off-centered thing and uh, it kind of wants to smash your hands. So I was using like a screwdriver and uh, trying not to smash my fingers, but yeah, she's in here now. You can see that the engine was already previously taken apart. Not exactly sure what's wrong with it. Don't really care. I may maybe rebuild this one. Not exactly sure. We'll just have to tear it down, see what's wrong with it. I have two of these engines now, so maybe I could rebuild this. Maybe it's a transmission, but I'm guessing it's the engine. Yeah, I was thinking I probably should tighten the bolts on the lift before I uh, use it again. And uh, I think they're kind of loose. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> they're all super loose. All of these bolts on the lift have been pretty loose until I got to this one that the washer isn't even touching. It's hand tight. Oh man, well maybe I'll be all right after I tighten it. All the bolts are tightened on the lift. I'm guessing I figured out why the car fell off of it. So every bolt was loose except for one. Now, when I push on it, it doesn't sway back and forth. So I'm gonna use this to about halfway, just high enough, well not, maybe a little less than halfway, just enough so I can get the subframe and the engine rolled out of it. And then when I put the subframe and stuff back in, there won't be an engine, so I won't have to have it as high. But I think that's probably the issue that, you know, the whole reason everything happened with the lift. But enough of that, let's get to work on this and uh, get this engine and tranny and everything out of this thing. And uh, man, that was a lot of work tightening all those bolts. I didn't have my impact. Hopefully, it's gonna be a lot of work without my impact today. It's gonna be like working on cars like 10 years ago. All the drivetrain is now out of the Magnum, tranny, drive shaft. I just left everything connected. What I'm gonna do now is remove the drive shaft and remove the engine from the cross member. Once I have the engine removed from the cross member, I'm just going to bolt everything back in just so it rolls. So right now I want it to be a rolling car. I have been looking for an all-wheel all -wheel drive charger, I think. I should have one in the next couple weeks so we can get the whole process started. I still need to find a wide body Hellcat so or a wide body Charger Hellcat. So um, I saw one, somebody showed me one that was wrecked at Copart. It was a little bit too wrecked. I need one that is pretty much just either tapped in the side in, the, in between the two doors or actually technically I need to have the back door because the flare goes into the door. So I need to kind of figure out, you know, I need to find one that has everything that I need because I don't want to have to be buying a bunch of million pieces like I did with my Hellcat. 
uh, because it just adds up really quick, especially the flares, the fenders, there's all the liners and there's this and that and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I'd rather find one that's either hit in the back where it maybe didn't buckle the quarters. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I need a way to make all the wide body stuff fit on this and uh, I need a, almost a complete car. So I don't wanna just go and buy a brand new one to cut up because they're like 80 to 100 grand. I'd rather find a wrecked one. But I think once we have the all wheel drive charger, we can commence the process and start figuring out how to fit the transmission in here, if it fits or not, or if I have to modify the tunnel or if I have to swap the whole um, floor pan. I'm not exactly sure. It's all gonna be new to me. It's all gonna be new to you guys. So I guess we'll just kind of figure it out as we go. But let's get this engine and tranny off this cross member so we can get this thing rolling again, push it back outside and bring my Magnum back in here and uh, pretty much call it a night because it is getting pretty late. And I think I'm gonna be probably looking around one or two in the, two in the morning getting done with this stuff. So let's uh, get back to work. So just pulled the engine and transmission off of the subframe and I probably made the biggest mess in the history of messes. I uh, probably should have looked at the front cover and made sure all the bolts were in it because when I uh, lifted it up, it just dumped all the oil out of it. And surprisingly, I have a little thing to show you. This engine, I thought this car maybe had a blown up engine like my other one, maybe had bad transmission. The tranny fluid looked very good, smelled very good. So I'm probably gonna be able to sell this tranny as well. And then the oil, look at this, so look how nice this oil is. So the oil looks brand new. The, uh, the thing about the oil looking brand new, I once the front cover fell off, I probably would have never took the front cover off. I probably would have just stuck this engine outside into the scrap bin, but then the front cover fell off. Look at this. So it looks like whoever had this car was probably rebuilding this engine. It has new valve cover gaskets. All the, all the, uh, it looks like the heads were just redone. They're very clean. Everything's brand new in there. All the timing stuff's new. There's a new oil pump and uh, just kind of looks like they're trying to fix this engine. What I'm gonna do with this engine is, the last one, people were mad that I blew it up. It needed to be blown up. This engine looks extremely good, so I'm gonna go through it, make sure everything measures out, um, pull it apart, put it back together, and kind of go from there. If uh, everything's good, I'll probably end up selling this thing. You know, it, it seems like these two sevens are pretty bad, so I probably could get like five to 800 bucks for it, which, uh, you know, it'll cover what I paid for the Magnum, and, you know, somebody go get a really good engine since uh, this has all brand new stuff in it. It just depends who put it together and uh, kind of what, um, you know, as long as everything's good to go, I don't have an issue selling something like this to somebody. So yeah, very surprising that uh, this is what was uh, in the Magnum. I thought the drivetrain was pretty much garbage, but I guess there's a good 2.7 here. I have a good transmission. So I should be able to make some money back from this Magnum to put towards, well, it's not gonna really put very much towards the, uh, the Hellcat swap stuff, but we will uh, now clean up this big oil mess. The Magnum is now back off the lift and everything went extremely well. I'm really glad that I got the drivetrain out of the car. It just makes it one step closer to beginning the whole process of swapping the all wheel drive stuff into this car. So that being said, I'm gonna push this thing back out. I uh, didn't know that I was out of floor dry. So I'm just gonna have to scrounge around for some floor dry to clean up this big oil pedal. And uh, somehow this thing is still leaking oil. I don't understand it. Look how big the fender gap is without an engine in it. Look at that. It's like monster truck status and it has the wheels to, to back it up. Just push the other Magnum out. That is quite a workout. I also pulled my Magnum back in the shop and tomorrow I'm gonna have to grab some floor dry because I thought I had some, but obviously I'm out. So this big puddle of oil is just gonna have to sit overnight. Tomorrow we'll clean it all up and uh, just kind of go from there. So I'm really happy that I was able to get all the drivetrain and everything out of the other Magnum, get it ready to start commencing the whole all wheel drive build. So I uh, have been looking at a few police chargers over the, the last two weeks. And uh, I think I found one, possibly. 
I'll have to bid on it and see where it goes, but I don't really want to pay over five grand for an all wheel drive police charger because that's about what they go for usually. So the one I'm looking at is actually wrecked in the front, but uh, I think it'll have most of the stuff that I'll need, all the all wheel drive stuff. Hopefully everything bolts in. Uh, if not, I'll probably have to end up swapping tranny tunnels, but I'm not sure. So I can't wait to start the process of figuring out how everything's gonna go together, get that all, all in there working and then swap a Hellcat engine in there or a red eye engine or something like that and then the full interior. So I am also looking for a wide body Hellcat um, charger, not challenger, but uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a little process to find these newer cars and uh, get everything so we can get this Magnum going down the road. And uh, I think it'll be pretty sweet. So if you like these videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below, share it with your friends. And as always, see you guys maybe tomorrow, maybe next time.